This is Mr. Van Kaplan. Today I'm going to show you how to program using Robot C. Uh, when you open the program, it should look like this. You want to close this tab out, hit New File, and then there are several things you're going to have to do the first time you write a program. The first thing I want you to do is click on Robot up here, go to Platform Type, yours will be on IQ, switch it to VEX 2.0 Cortex, and then you need to do that one more time. And make sure it says Natural Language PLTW. That stands for Project Lead the Way, which is the curriculum you are in currently. Okay, after you've done that, you should see Natural Language over here. This is where you're going to do all of your commands, which I'll teach you how to do in just a second. You always have to have Task Main with the parentheses, and then you need the starting bracket and the closing bracket. Okay, these have to be here or your programming won't work correctly. Um, we're going to do all of our coding in between these brackets. But the first thing we're going to do, we're going to write what is called pseudocode, and this is where you're going to explain what goes on. So you need to put a backslash and an asterisk, which is shift, and the number 8. should turn green there, and that's good. That's what we want. So we're going to say this is an elevator. Uh, put who is programming it, so I'm going to put my name. When you do later projects with your group, just put all two or three group, three group member names. For this one, let's all put our individual names since everyone's going to do this program. Okay, and then we're going to just give a quick explanation. Let's say the elevator starts on base floor. When button is pushed, elevator goes to floor two. When button is pushed, again, I hit enter to go down there. It'll keep going out to the side, and we don't want to do that. We want to keep it in the screen. Elevator goes to floor. Three, final time button is pushed, elevator returns from third floor to base. Okay, now we want to get rid of this green writing. To do that, you do the opposite. You put your asterisk, then your backslash, and see how my task main turn blue, my red brackets are still here, or parentheses in my brackets are here as well. So hit enter. I like to space this out where it's not all crowded. Okay. And the next thing we're going to do, we're going to set up our motors. Okay, so you go to robot, go to motor and sensor setup, and the digital sensor, you don't have anything yet. For this build, let's use 12. We're going to say touch. And then I want you to put button here. Okay, the next thing we need to do, we need to set up our motor. Let's put it in port 2. Let's put motor. Change that to a three-wire motor. Okay, once you've done that, hit apply. And... The first time you run your program, if your motor goes backwards, all you have to do is come back in here and reverse that motor. After you reverse it, hit apply again, but for now we're not going to reverse it. Okay. Another way you can change the direction of the motor, when you set the speed, instead of putting positive 25, you could change it to negative 25 and that will reverse it as well. Okay. So I've got all this set up, I'm going to hit apply again going to hit OK. And it's put some automatic codes here. It tells you your sensor digital button 12 and it tells you your motor port 2. Okay, the next thing we want to do, we want to do our first code. So click under the starting red bracket. We're going to use an until because nothing happens till we press that button. Okay, you can use until button press, until bump. I always use bump. Okay. I labeled that digital 12, so DGTL, and you got to be really careful here. That L and 1 looks very similar. This is digital 1, 
digital 10, digital 11, digital 12. Once you get there, hit enter. Should be red. The delay time is in milliseconds. You want to give that button enough time to get your hand off. So let's put five milliseconds. Okay. So I've pressed the button. I'm going to hit enter. Again, I like to leave spaces here. The next thing we want, we want movement. So we're going to do start motor. We made it port 2, so let's type that port. They pop up automatically. 2 is the third one. Hit enter. Your speed can be anywhere from 1 to 127. Usually it won't work until about 15 or so with these motors, especially if you've got a load on them like a car, or in this case we've got a sprocket and a chain. Let's try a speed of 25. And what that tells me, I push my button, the motor stops at a speed of 25. Now that would just run constantly if we don't put any other commands in here. So we're going to set a time, we're going to put a wait time. Uh, and this goes pretty fast, depending on how high you've built your floors, you're going to have to adjust this and fine tune it after you've ran it a couple of times. I'm going to put a wait time of 0.75 seconds, so you have to put 0 0.75, okay? And after that, I want this motor to stop, so I'm going to drag stop motor, and again, just like here, it's port 2. So this should get me to the first floor, okay? No guarantee that my timing is right. That's something I'll have to adjust, um, and you'll have to do the same as you go on. You're going to test it out and see. If it goes up too high, you need to lower the time or change the speed. If it doesn't go up high enough, you need to add to the time, okay? So this should get us from the base to the second floor. And the good thing about Robot C, instead of having to drag this over again, okay, my next step, if I look up here, when the button is pushed again, it goes from floor 2 to floor 3. So I'm going to highlight all these commands, right-click, copy, come down here, right-click, paste, and I want that space between them. So this should go from floor 2 to floor 3, okay? And then the next thing I'm going to do from floor 3 to, I want to go back to floor 1. So I'm going to copy that again, paste, okay? Now here I know I'm going to have to adjust my timing. This is the third floor once I got here. I want it to come down, so I'm going to change that to a negative. And then it's going past two floors, so I'm going to put my time at 1.5 seconds. Okay, 1.50. Uh, speed, you're going to have gravity helping you out here. You may have to slow it down just a little bit. But here's your basic commands. Where you're going to have to make adjustments is on the speed or these wait times. Okay, these are just defaults. Okay, I'm just guessing here. I haven't ran it yet. Um, but that looks good there. The one thing you want to make, make sure you got your bracket there. Mine skipped down a little bit. Okay, I'm going to go down there and backspace it up to the very right there. See how it's right after my last command. Um, and the next thing you want to do, go up to Robot, go to VEX Communication Mode, set that to USB only. Okay, and here's how to tell if your code has any errors. You hit Compile Program, it's going to prompt you to save it, so name it something. I'm just going to say Elevator, PLTW. Okay, but you hit your Compile Program, and mine says, has your name there, Elevator, PLTW Compiled. If there were any errors, a red X would pop up here, and then it would say, Cannot Load Program. There's a, it would tell you what it is, and we'll have to look at it and troubleshoot it. Okay, so this code is good. And if you follow along correctly, you shouldn't have any problems. Sometimes people skip a letter. If they put PRT, that won't work. You have to spell out port on the digital. Make sure it says DGTL. Don't put a 1 there. Okay, uh, it looks very similar. 
Then the next thing we're going to do, once you've compiled and don't have any errors, uh, you'll turn your Cortex on, make sure your battery's plugged in, make sure your motor and your button are plugged into the correct place. I will give you an orange USB cord. You need to hook that up to your Cortex and to your computer. And then you should have two green lights on your Cortex. One should say robot and the other one should say game. And they, the game one will be flashing repeatedly. The robot one flashes a little bit slower. Okay. Another thing, when you hook up your motor, make sure you've hooked up that jumper wire that turns it from a two wire to a three wire motor. And then you hit download the robot. Okay, it's going to say program debug. You hit start. Nothing should happen until you hit the button. Okay, hit the button and it goes. Okay, now I've downloaded mine and I see a problem. Okay, um, my motor is on the top of this elevator instead of the bottom. Instead of going up, it went down. So I am going to have to reverse that motor. So I'll go to motors and sensor setups. Motor 2, I'm going to click reversed. I'm going to hit apply. Then I'm going to hit, I hit apply here, then hit OK. Now here's the tricky part. Okay. I've changed it. I want to save it. And then you have to re-download it to the robot. So if you get in there and change speeds and times, you have to re-download to the robot. And maybe you can hear this, the motor going up. Okay. 0.75, not bad. Uh, probably need to adjust that a little bit, maybe to 0.8 or 0.79, and I'll show you that when you all get in here. Um, again, make sure and adjust your times. If you have to reverse that motor, it just depends on what side of the the brackets you put your motor at, and then how it's how it's bolted. Sometimes you bolt them upside down, you may not have to reverse it, okay? Go ahead, I'm going to save this one last time, and then I'm going to show you this at, in class today. I'll show you the effects of adjusting the speed and adjusting the time. Um, on your next builds, you know, you're going to have to work together and program it on your own. When you do a car and things like that, you're going to have multiple motors, and you're always going to have to reverse either the right or the left side so that the car will go forward. Um, if you don't reverse them, the wheels will spin in different directions, and it either won't go anywhere or, or it will just do a donut the whole time. But this is the basics of programming your elevator. Um, you don't have many commands in here. Again, get it to that first floor and then just use the copy and paste tool and adjust your speeds for the differences between your floors. But we'll work on that today in class.